Welcome back to Dr. Radio Reports, Coronavirus, What You Need to Know Now. I'm Dr. Mark Siegel, the medical director of Dr. Radio. I'm a professor of medicine at NYU Langone Health. I'm a Fox News medical correspondent. Uh, I have the honor of having on with me now uh, Dr. Brett Girard, who is an American pediatrician. He's an officer in the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps. He is the assistant secretary of HHS for Health, and he's been appointed to be in charge of testing, uh, COVID-19 testing, by HHS Secretary Alex Azar back on March 12th. And so he has a very tough role here because this is something that's been very, very spotlighted. Dr. Girard, welcome to the show. It's great to be on. Thanks for having me. Admiral, where are we right now with testing? Well, we've, we've come a long way, and we still have a long way to go. Where we are right now is we are able to do uh, well over 100,000 tests per day uh, on Americans, which is sufficient to test the high-priority uh, individuals, those who are in the hospital, those who are sick, healthcare workers, people in long-term care facilities, um, first responders who are symptomatic. We are not at a state nor will we be at a state in the near future where anyone who just wants a test or those who are mildly ill can get a test. We, we have hundreds of thousands a day. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we will not have millions per day. So we have sufficient testing to do what we need to do to affect patient care and to keep people safe, uh, but it's going to be a few weeks before we're beyond that point. Uh, Abbott has come out with a with a rapid test. to uh, You do a nasal swab and you know within 5 to 13 minutes whether you're positive. Is there any role for that? I mean, not in general is there any role for that, but is there any role for that in augmenting the speed of, of, of knowing who has this and broadening who can get the test, given that they say they can do 50,000 tests a day? Now, the Abbott point of care test, really very important. And as you pointed out, it's, it's one of the only, uh, only a handful of tests and clearly the most disseminated that can get a positive result within four minutes and a negative result within 15 minutes. Now, they're going to produce 50,000 tests a day, and, th and that's a lot, but it's not 500,000 or 5 million. So what we're doing with this test is we would hope that those who really need an immediate result, um, either for, for, for a clinical reason, to go on a study protocol, to know whether they're isolated in the ICU, um, can get this sort of test, as well as individuals in, in very important epidemiologic investigations. For example, a nursing home. We know that nursing home mortality can be 30, 40, 50 percent. So it's very important to spot test people, both to protect our seniors, but also to know what seniors might be ill and, and can spread it. So until this could be many hundreds of thousands per day, this is still a limited and very precious resource because we can get a result essentially immediately. And there's no other test that can do that. I want to switch back to the issue of how we test. You gave me notice of the idea that we were going to have swabs that, that could be self-administered. In other words, nasal swabs that CDC was testing versus the more aggressive nasopharyngeal swab. Can you walk me through that? How, how are we going to change how we're going to approach testing uh, swab-wise in order to decrease the need for PPE at a time when we need it in the hospitals? You are exactly 100 percent correct. Um, the self-swab really is, is something that um, is, an, is a critical breakthrough because, as you pointed out, uh, it does not need to be administered by a healthcare provider like the nasopharyngeal swabs. And when that healthcare provider does a nasopharyngeal swab, they have to change PPE between each test. And the exact fact, as we calculated this early on, is that if we really wanted to have widespread testing uh, consistent with the capability that we had even two weeks ago, we would have blown 80% of the strategic national stockpile in the first two weeks just on testing. And obviously that is unconscionable because people need the PPE in the hospitals. So this nasal swab was so important to me and to our teams and United Health Group out on the West Coast with, with the Gates Foundation really did the validation study to submit to the FDA. It allows at the community-based testing, for example, for people to come in, and we have video training. It's very simple. It's a swab in the outer part of the nose. To do that, put it in a plastic bag, drop it in a container. Um, you don't need a healthcare provider to stick the swab nasopharyngeally, which you know is a little bit invasive, and there's no PPE. So we think this is really important 
to the next phase of testing. And, and thank you again for pointing it out. And, and uh, I'm glad we had the conversation a couple weeks ago when this was being developed. I'm just so pleased that the data supported our hypothesis. Admiral, I want to um, shift gears a little to something that Dr. Burke said last night, Ambassador Burke said, about immunological testing, something we call an ELISA, which is an exciting test. It's an immunoassay. I wanted you to, you to talk to what the goal of that would be in terms of knowing who's immune, maybe knowing who has a recent infection if it's an IgM. Walk, walk me through how that test would be useful to us right now. So, first of all, we're, we're still working to finalize the concepts of how this would be employed, but uh, this is the working hypothesis sort of right off the press. Um, we, for epidemiologic reasons, we need to know how many people were infected. And you can't really know that because there are so many asymptomatic infections that even if we had all the tests that we could, people wouldn't come to be tested and you can't test 300 million people. The second important component is it would be really fantastic to have sort of a digital immunity passport that could be protected health information that you can carry that, for, for example, if you're a healthcare worker in a long-term facility, that we know wherever you go, you're certified immune. Right, And if this test can show that you have IgG, and as we expect that the IgG will correlate with immunity, and that needs to be absolutely proven, right, that if you have an IgG, you're not shedding virus, and we're working on that right now. But if you had that, then essentially we would know that, for example, you could not contract the virus and spread it to long-term care facilities or the elderly. Do you see a point of care where you have the, the, uh, the PCR test and then you have the uh, uh, the uh, the serological test one one for active infection the other one for you know antibodies to to uh, to COVID nineteen I think we will have um, very hot very uh, user friendly uh, quote pregnancy test like abilities that can be done within a couple of minutes to show your immunity we will have point of care testing to show if you're infected currently and shedding virus. Again, not so scalable. Think of the Abbott machine, 50,000 a day, not 5 million a day. Um, uh, and in the future, we will have a vaccine that, you know, is 12 to 18 months away. So, our, you know, th this looks good coming together, um, and it's going to come together soon, but it's not together now. You know, this is a brand new virus the world has never seen with unforeseen challenges. And, you know, right now we are we are – focused on making sure that people who need testing, who have a difference in their therapies, or could transmit the virus to needy populations all get tested. We can do that. We cannot do a lot more than that, and I want people to be realistic about that. We've come a long way, but that's where we are. And secondly, making sure we meet the clinical needs with ventilators, hydroxychloroquine, all the kind of things that will save lives today, tomorrow, and over the next couple of weeks. But the next stage, as we just talked about, is coming very soon. Do you think we can transition as a society to using testing to some extent to either augment or to replace the need for isolation? So, of course, um, you're 100 percent correct, and, and this is a difficult question, but I think the answer is yes. Um, this is not an on or off switch, right? We're not going to be in the middle of a pandemic, and then we're going to be out of the pandemic completely. There is going to be transition times. Um, the country doesn't open up, doesn't close down and open up all with a light switch. Um, it is clear that we're going to need to get critical industries, including healthcare industries, back on their feet uh, and back working. And during that transition time out of this or potentially into the next wave, we are going to need a combination of serologic testing for immunity plus active testing to look for those who are asymptomatic. Um, that that. You know, it's messy, it's not clean, it's not perfect, it's not black and white, but that is reality, right? Life, biology, medicine is not so simple. So I agree with you completely during the transition out of this and potentially during the transition into a next phase, that kind of combination is really important. It can't be done for 300 million people, but certainly for healthcare workers, workers in critical industries, um, I think there's a combination. I think it's going to have to happen, no question whatsoever in my mind.